Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is Chemistry Essentials video 11. It's on symbolic representations. When you look at a candle burning, what you're seeing are processes at work. You're seeing both physical changes, in other words the wax is melting to become a liquid and then it's becoming a gas, and then you're also seeing chemical changes as that wax combines with oxygen in the air. You're seeing combustion. And so what we can do in chemistry is use symbolic representations of that to show conservation in mass. And so processes can be physical or chemical, but in, in chemistry we can use representations to look at those changes. They could be symbolic representations or they could be particulate drawings. But in both of those cases we're going to see a conservation of matter. In other words, matter can neither be created nor destroyed. And so we can use that to calculate reactants uh, based on products or products based on reactants. And also we can look at macroscopic changes. We can look at movement of particles around. An example of that would be the carbon cycle. And so if we're looking at the physical versus chemical changes, an example of a physical change could just be boiling of water. In other words, we're changing water into a different phase, from a liquid into a gas phase. But a chemical change is going to require the breaking and forming of new bonds. And so an example of that could be the combustion of hydrogen found in the Hindenburg explosion. In other words, the hydrogen and the oxygen are combining to make water. And so we don't have hydrogen gas anymore. And so let's look at water to start with. And so what would be a symbolic representation of this phase change in water? We could look at water that's a liquid, and so the L means liquid. We're going to add a little bit of energy to that, and then we're going to create water that is a gas. And so what are these bubbles in boiling water? It's simply water that's changed phase from a liquid to a gas. What would a particulate representation or a particulate drawing look like of that same process? We'd have water molecules here. They're now a liquid. We're adding a little bit of heat to it, and now they're a gas. And so both of those are essentially saying the same things. Uh, it's just a model so we can wrap our head around it. Let's look at hydrogen combustion. What would be a symbolic representation of that? We'd have hydrogen gas with oxygen gas. You can see that these are both gases and then we're forming water that's a liquid and we're releasing a huge amount of energy from that. Now a few things you should remember. The two here, the subscript, means that's the number of atoms of hydrogen that we have in one hydrogen molecule. And then the two out front, that coefficient, is going to tell us how many molecules that we have of that. If we had had a particulate drawing, here would be our hydrogen. So we have one, two, in this drawing we have four hydrogen molecules. So the H2 means we have two of the hydrogen. And then we'd have four of these molecules combining with two molecules of oxygen. And in this case we'd have four uh, molecules of water. And so the conservation of matter is incredibly important. It was first developed by Antoine Lavoisier. Here he is with his wife, Marie Anne, and she worked in his lab and was really important in helping him make all these amazing discoveries. And if we were to say, what is he most famous for? He's most famous for moving chemistry from a qualitative, in other words, let's look at um, the, the color that's created or smoke is created, to more of a quanti quantitative uh, science. In other words, he was always measuring the masses, and he would use these big spheres, glass spheres, so he could collect all the material that was created. And so if we look at all of these both symbolic representations and particulate drawings, the mass before the physical or chemical change is going to equal that after. And so we can actually use this to solve some simple problems. Let's say the Hindenburg carried 1.77 times 10 to the fourth kilograms of hydrogen, and this combined with 1.42 times 10 to the fifth kilograms of oxygen, how much water would be formed in that? Well, this is a really simple kind of a problem. We'd first draw out a symbolic representation. We've got the amount of hydrogen and the amount of oxygen. And so since mass can neither be created nor destroyed, the mass that we have before the reaction is going to equal the mass we have after. So if I were to solve this, I'd write out the two masses we have before. You can see that they're going to be written in scientific notation, but these don't quite match up. So I may change this so that they match it up. And then it makes it a little easier to add those. So we'd make 1.60 times 10 to the fifth kilograms of water. Now most of that water wasn't liquid. It was probably liquid that was just spread over a large area. If we were to quantify that in that Hindenburg explosion, 176 tons of water were made during that explosion. And so another thing that you should understand is as matter cycles, as it becomes one molecule and moves into another molecule, it's also going to be conserved. And so an example of this could be a biogeochemical cycle. So an example could be carbon. And so the carbon that's found in the atmosphere eventually becomes carbon in plants becomes carbon in food and then becomes the carbon inside you and as you die we release that carbon into the atmosphere but it's not like we are creating or um, destroying matter it's the same mass that's moving throughout that cycle 
And so again, in review, we can use representations, both symbolic and particulate drawings, to show, show this conservation of mass. The problems are very simple, but we can also use it to measure large macroscopic movement. And so did you learn this to express the conservation of mass qualitatively and quantitatively? Qualitatively, we could do that through one of these particulate drawings or in some kind of a chemical equation, but if we want to do it quantitatively, we actually have to measure the mass before and relate that to the mass after or vice versa, and I hope that was helpful.